Without objection, the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Ivey, will be able to participate in today's hearing for the purpose of questioning the witness if a member yields him time for that purpose. I see no objection. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. Again, I thank the members for coming. I thank the direct, Director Peters for coming today and uh, uh, the audience. We, we appreciate you being here. This hearing is oversight of the Bureau of Prisons. The Federal Bureau of Prisons is a component of the Department of Justice. BOP's mission is to protect society by confining offenders in the controlled environments of prisons and community-based facilities that are safe, humane, cost-efficient, and appropriately secure. And they, BOP provides work and other self-improvement opportunities to assist offenders in becoming law-abiding citizens. At a time of rising crime, this is a critically important function. BOP operates 122 institutions and locations throughout the nation. These institutions are operated at five different security levels in order to confine offenders in an appropriate manner. As of last week, BOP is responsible for the custody and care of more than 158,000 inmates and employees, more than 34,000 individuals. Nearly five years ago, President Trump signed in law the First Step Act of 2018. That act sought to reduce the size of the federal prison population and reduce recidivism while still maintaining public safety. The act's three main goals were one, correctional reform, two, sentencing reform, and three, reauthorization of the Second Chance Act of 2007. BOP is charged with much of the implementation of the First Step Act. As I mentioned earlier, we're experiencing a nationwide spike in crime and it's vital that BOP gets this implementation right. The First Step Act required DOJ to develop a system for BOP to use to assess, to assess the risk of recidivism of federal prisoners and to assign prisoners to evidence-based recidivism reduction programs. These programs include literacy programs, occupational educational programs, trade skill programs, and substance use disorder programs. Inmates who complete the recidivism reduction programming can earn additional time credits which allows them to be placed in home confinement or an RRC earlier than they would have been. This is why I said BOP needs to make sure they get it right. We cannot allow criminals to be leaving our prisons early unless we can ensure that they will not reoffend. This subcomm subcommittee has examined the implementation of the First Step Act on a bipartisan basis since its passage, and we're continuing that conversation today. However, there's a larger underlying issue that has persistently plagued the successful operation of BOP, including the implementation of the First Step Act. BOP consistently grapples with challenges of low staffing and high attrition rates, intensifying the risk in an already hazardous profession. As I mentioned, BOP employs approximately 35,000 personnel across various prisons and facilities throughout the U.S. That's a 5% decline from the 37,000 employed in 2020, Yet the prison inmate population has not declined. In fact, it's increased by 3,000. As of last month, more than 20% of the 20,446 congressionally authorized corrections officer positions remain vacant. More than two years ago, the GAO published a study identifying several underlying causes for these staffing challenges. The GAO analysis highlighted that BOP had not been proficient in accurately assessing or providing documentation to support its staffing deficits. GAO identified that BOP resorted to amplifying the overtime hours of its personnel to mitigate staffing shortages. As a result, the cumulative overtime hours surged by 102% between 2015 and 2019. This escalation in compulsory overtime imposed significant stress on the BOP workforce, which eroded workplace morale and instigated the departure of seasoned correctioned officers. Consequently, these actions amplified the safety vulnerabilities for the remaining personnel and inadvertently extend the wait times for inmates to assess, excuse me, access basic services. I know that Director Peters is, is acutely aware of this persistent problem, and I look forward to hearing from her today on the steps that BOP is taking to address the staffing shortage and other issues at the, at the Bureau. I appreciate you being here, Director. I look forward to hearing for you, from you, and I'll yield back. Uh, Ms. Jackson Lee, the ranking member is absent today, and, and Ms. McBath is stepping in in her place, and I recognize